Okay. Okay, we should be, should be ready to go. Should be good to go. Thank you. Good morning, Uma. I should say Uma family. How are you today? My name is Dijor Jones. Good morning, Uma family. My name is Dijor Jones and I am a yoga therapist. Um, I'd like to share just a couple of suggestions before we start. If you have any injuries, please take care of yourself. If I um, ask of you a certain position or pose or shape and you have had some injury or discomfort in a certain area, um, please maybe be more experiential and testing out the shape. Or if it's pain, then please not do the shape at all or the pose at all. Um, <clears throat> pain is the body's way of letting us know that something is wrong. And so in yoga, we never want to create any pain. We also don't want to re-injure ourselves in any exercise program or, or movement. We're more of a movement program versus exercise. Um, we don't want to bring any injury to any, any kind of uh, activity that we do that is not um, healthy or helpful for our wellness and our healing. And so anything I ask of you that, uh, you know, my arm is my example, it was broken quite a few years ago, but if I bring it back here, it doesn't feel the greatest. So I bring it up a little tiny bit forward. So I wanna stay on the front edge of the discomfort or if it was pain, staying on the front edge of the pain. Um, and if you need a break, uh, whether water break, a rest break, a bathroom break, please, um, take care of yourself. Um, I always say that you are your best yoga teacher and you know what you need and when you need it. Uh, I'll be asking of you to notice different um, potential sensations. Um, Twofold reason I do that. One is occasionally it's calling out the actual target area of the thing that we're doing. And the second reason is it keeps us sometimes from starting to daydream or our attention drift off. And so if I say, you notice if you feel anything on your right side rib cage and you don't feel anything, there's nothing wrong, nothing to fix, nothing to do about that. It's just, um, that is it, that's the way it is for you. So there's no, it's not punitive if you don't feel anything and also something wrong. Imani, are you there? Hold on one second, Imani. Can you pause or can you stop it again? Please. To ask you if I need to start that whole intro over or can, I don't know if we can patch it together. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know, can you hearing me? Can you hear me? It was my Wi-Fi. like I said, I was having- I'm going to send you a text message. There you are, say it again. I said, I'm having issues with Wi-Fi. Okay. You should be able to- I'll just, just so you want me to wait? Keep going? Yeah, go ahead. You're having an echo too. Okay, I'll just keep going when you start up again. Okay, just give me a second. It's because YouTube Live is on, which is why it's an echo. Okay. okay so I was just saying I couldn't hear I couldn't hear you clearly of your instruction to me, but I, I, I'm just going to basically introduce the clinic, say, I mean, say hi to the clinic, and then say my name, and then I'm going to just start uh, okay. instead of the whole intro part. It's, it's a lot. Okay. If that's okay with you. Yeah, that's okay. 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 When it says recording started, go ahead and start. Thank you.
Good morning, Uma family. My name is Dijor and I am your yoga therapist for today, for this week. Um, we'll get started right away. I'm gonna start seated for now. So grab a chair. I'm sitting on a really low stool because it's here and, and, and convenient instead of me dragging out my big old chair that I usually do chair yoga on, which is heavy and I don't wanna have to keep moving furniture around while we're together. So any seat um, that's stable, um, I'm on a stool. You can use a stable bench or chair, preferably a chair with no arms so you have free movement. Um, we'll start first with just the grounding practice. So bring your hands. I'm gonna show you some different positions. You can choose what is uh, what feels best for you regarding placing your hands right now. So you can have them palms down on your knees or thighs. You can, and this is a grounding mudra. Mudra is hand yoga. So this positioning or placement of the hands down is a grounding mudra. If you're feeling a little spacey, sometimes you can place your hands down on anything. It can be body or floor if you're sitting near the floor. Um, and that gives you a grounding sensation, a grounded sensation. You can do palms up, knees or thighs, which is a receiving or receptive gesturing of the hands, um, symbolically gesturing for whatever you want, more love, affection, peace, that you are you're giving the hand gesture to receive that. You can place hands over your belly. This is a very self-soothing placement of the hands. And sometimes I do this when I'm feeling nervous uh, and I rock my body. I don't know if you noticed, but my body started rocking right away. I did not do that on purpose. But as a tool to regulate our nervous systems, you can um, rock side to side. Uh, that helps to calm things down if you're feeling anxious. Leave the left hand over the belly button, right hand over the heart. You can try that and noticing the heartbeat on my hand is spread really, my right hand is spread really wide so that my palm is pressing onto where my heart is and noticing the heartbeat there. And so those are just some of the placements of the hands. You can choose one, choose two, move them around, whatever you'd like. We'll notice our uh, feet making contact with whatever, the floor, in my case, there's wood, hardwood floor underneath carpet, tile, cement, grass, dirt, whatever your feet are resting on. Notice the contact of your feet touching that surface. Lift and lower the toes a few times. You can't see my feet the way I have the camera angled, but just lift and lower, curl the toes up and then let them rest on the floor, up and down a few times. And then let the toes rest. Take a look around your space. And though you may have seen it a million times, try to look at it, look around it with fresh eyes as if it's your first time in that room, taking in colors and textures and things that put that room together. So I'm seeing plants, sofa, chairs, tables, books, uh, stuff on the wall, artwork. Just having a look around. And then noticing the air in your space, whether it's cooler than you, where, where the air meets your skin, the contact of the air on your skin, where the skin ends and the air starts. Um, is the air cooler, warmer, or the same? It's neutral. Listening to sounds inside your space. And then taking your awareness to sounds outside your space. So I may have a little wind out there. And so I can hear the leaves rustling a little bit. I also hear when cars are going by, the ground is wet. I guess we had rain, a little rain, and just, just enough rain to mess up my recent car wash. Um, but I can hear that wet sound of the tires going over the pavement. I don't hear any birds right now. So listening to the sounds that are outside of your room. 
noticing any taste in your mouth. So I, what I've had last is toothpaste. Maybe you've had juice or coffee or water or food. Noticing any smells. So if you've cooked the smell of what you cooked, I started a diffuser before we got on that has among other things, lavender oil, um, sandalwood, um, orange, and some other stuff. But those are the three top, top scents that I can smell from where I sit. We'll now move our attention onto our breath. So we'll be using the, the uh, nose to breathe through our entire class. And the reason, you know, I like to explain why we're doing stuff so that you have a clear understanding of um, how yoga can be a therapy system versus just an exercise. We're not just stretching, but we're stretching with a purpose. Um, and so if things, you know, ail you and, you know, your back hurts and we try something, I might say this could be good if your mid back is tight or your low back is tight. So the purpose of breathing through the nose, and I don't breathe through my nose all the time, but most of the time I do. A couple of reasons why. The nasal hairs pick up any atmospheric dust and debris that we can't see when we inhale. The um, nasal passage keeps that breath warm and moist. So when the, that breath hits the lungs, the lungs don't have to reheat the breath or warm it up or rehydrate the breath. So there's an efficiency there of not having your lungs have to do extra stuff for, for, for no reason. Um, when you breathe through your mouth, also the brain regulates how much air you can you should take into your nostril. Now, if you're stuffy, that's a whole different talk. But if your nasal passages are clear, the, bra the brain regulates how much air you take in and which side it comes in which side, when right nostril, left nostril. Um, with the mouth, you inhale, your mouth immediately dries up because you're dehydrating that breath by breathing in. And the breath turns cold, as you can feel, it's a cool, cooling. We do have some cooling breaths in yoga that we breathe through our mouth. Um, so the, it's dry and now it's cool. So it hits the lungs, the lungs have to warm it up and dehydrate it before the breath is really accepted into the body in a, in a nutritious way. So that's the purpose of nasal breathing. Other big, one more big thing is that the exhale, nasal exhale helps you to regulate your nervous system. So that's a big key. That does not happen when you exhale through your mouth. So the key to regulating your nervous system is the extended exhale through your nose, which could come to serve you well if you're in a situation where you're stressed out where you have anxiety, where you are triggered about a memory or a thought of something that happened and it puts you back in that place that was really uncomfortable for you to be in the first time, the breath can help to regulate. It won't take the thought away. It won't take the memory away, but it helps you how you respond or react to that. So that is the purpose of nasal breathing. And we'll just sit hands wherever you want them and we'll do some breathing together. I want you to, we're going, going to do five cycles of breath and we won't do them together because our lungs have different capacity. So I want you to go on your own so that you can really fill your lungs all the way to the full, to fullness and then let it all out in your time instead of us trying to keep up with one another. So five cycles of breath at your, you start when you're ready and then we'll come back together. I want to talk about the eyes too. I forgot to mention that. If you'd like to close your eyes, you're more than welcome to do that. For many of us, closed eyes is not comfortable. We want to see what's happening. We are hypervigilant about our, our situation where we are. Leave your eyes open. You can also look around the space you're in if that brings you any comfort. And you can also lower the lids halfway. When we close our lids, we cut out all the external stimuli around us, which gives a deepening of quietude and um, sort of meditative quality to the different poses we'll do. Okay, now we'll start our five cycles of breath. So 
So the breaths are full, deep, and long. And after your fifth breath, you can return to just your natural rhythm of breathing. And just see if you notice any difference in your, how you feel from that thoughtful breathing or that yogic breathing that we just did. So one of the things that I feel is I feel a little brighter or more energized. And what I mean by that is we just filled our lungs with a lot of, of oxygenated breath or air. Um, we don't always breathe big like that. Most of us human beings breathe very shallow. We don't take advantage of our lung capacity. And so when we breathe these big breaths, we are pumping a lot of oxygen into the bloodstream and the heart carries it around with, uh, through the blood. The heart pumps it around the body. And sometimes you feel like a little more awake when you breathe like that. I don't breathe like that all day. But there are throughout each and every day, I take some, you know, just a minute, not even long, and just do some thoughtful breathing. Um, if I've been ripping and running, ripping and running, I say, let me just stop for a breath or two and just, you know, calm down my, my nervous system and all that. So the breath is an ever-present tool that you can use in your daily living. And it becomes a practice when you start to breathe throughout the day with those big inhales and exhales. That becomes a practice where you say, I need to stop and take a couple breaths here before I do anything else and then go on with your thing. Bring your hands in front of your heart. I'm gonna sweep out, inhale, reach the arms up overhead. I want you to bring the hands, palm, I'll bring the arms, palms down in a reverse swan dive and bend forward from the waist, from the hips, excuse me, from the hips. So the back is flat um, for now. And then inhale, reverse that, come all the way up. Exhale, swan dive the arms down and come down with a flat back as far as you can. So this forward bend is really great if you suffer from low back pain. Inhale up, exhale down. So it extends the muscles around the low back, the muscles that wrap around the low part of the spine by hanging forward. Let's hang forward here for a couple breaths. So deep and full breaths. And if you want to curl down more, you can. It's harder to breathe when you lean all the way forward, but work it out. Do the best you can. And inhale up. I'm going to twist to the right. So the left arm crosses over to the right knee. Uh, bring the right hand onto your right hip and sit up really tall and twist to your right. So my feet are still, even though you can't see them, they're still parallel to the floor. To, I'm sorry, to each other. Um, they are separated to a comfortable distance from one another for my body. You may want your feet together and that's fine. I like mine maybe about a half, not quite a foot apart, but maybe eight inches apart. Sit up tall and breathe, twist, breathe. Let's move the head from side to side. Slowing down the breath, full, long, complete inhales. And then let all the air out when you have your next exhale. Turning your head gently side to side. And let's inhale up, both arms up overhead. Sit up really tall and reach up here. So fingertips up toward the ceiling and then exhale. Twisting, right hand crosses over to the left knee, left hand on left hip. Turn your torso to the left, sit up straight. So we're not here. That is, I don't know what that is. That's not really anything. I need you to extend the spine up and twist. So imagine with each inhale, we get longer. And with each exhale, we twist deeper. We twist more to the left. If you'd like to move your head, you may, or you can leave it in one position. You choose which direction that is. Going back to side one, inhale, sit up really tall, 
long spine and then twisting to the right. Left hand outside the right knee, right hand on right hip, twisting right. You may move your head or not, you decide. Take full measures of breaths here. And then last time, second side, inhale, twist and exhale. While we're here, continue to breathe. We're not holding our breath. And then release and come back to center. See if you notice any changes on your side rib cage. So when we twist, we're separating the muscles on the side rib cage and pulling them apart in a way that brings a lot of oxygenated blood in there. And also we don't get a lot of, uh, as, as um, dancers and gymnasts get a lot of upward reaching. Most of the rest of us, unless we have some kind of work where we have to reach upward, we don't get a lot of stretch in the muscles on the side body. And so these twists help with that a little bit. Okay, and so these are really good if you have a long time sitting at a desk or in a chair. And also I do these in the car um, on occasional the red light. Uh, I'll just sit in the driver's seat at a red light or in the parking lot and just do some, some spinal twists. These are called seated spinal twists. And in yoga, there's seated twists and there's supine twists, which are twists on your back and there are standing twists. So there's a whole series of these twists in the yoga uh, the, in yoga studies, there's a whole series of these because they're really helpful. They also massage your organs from the inside by, by pushing them out of their natural position. So that's called toning. So that's another benefit of twists in yoga. Um, chin to chest and just hold here, drop your shoulders down. So looking down toward the floor, you can also close your eyes if you're comfortable to do that. Shoulders are low, spine is long. Chin is near the chest, just hold here. This is a nice stretch for the back of the neck. Hold and breathe. Shoulders are low. This, when you drop your shoulders, this also is a nice stretch for the tops of the shoulders. We sometimes walk around with our shoulders up without even knowing it, and that keeps the muscles tense all day, which is not healthy, it's not necessary. So try to work on shoulders low. There are times when shoulders come up because you need to react to something, but we don't need to do that in everyday living. So keep trying to practice, comes a practice, keep them low and relax. That way the muscles here are not tightened all day long. Circle your head, doesn't matter which way, slow and easy. We're not whipping around, whip, whipping the head around. Um, this is very interesting. I don't have any sound in my neck this morning in this direction, which is usually never the case for me. Um, so I'm amazed at that. I spent all day yesterday inside an airplane. I'm a flight attendant also. So we're cramped all day long and um, I'm really shocked that my neck is just no sound. The sound is not, a, is not, a, um, is not an emergency. Um, Sometimes it's just little air bubbles releasing. Sometimes it's the bones kind of realigning where they should be. But usually when I do these head, head roll, I have noise. Let's reverse that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, to the left, a little noise. So again, nothing for me to worry about, nothing for me to fix or force. It's just the way it is. A few more, we're sitting tall. Pull your belly button in a little bit. And we are breathing through our nose, big full inhales and then complete exhales. Come back to center, turn your chin near your left shoulder. Take your right fingertips to the um, right jaw. Gently push, gently, we're not forcing. Okay, so gently push, we're adding to that twist a little bit. Breathing through the nose. And as we go along, see if you notice any changes in your being as we go, how you feel, your emotions, your energy, energetic body, how does it feel if you notice any difference as we go along with our class. Let's go the other way. 
right shoulder near the right chin, left fingertips to left jaw, and just gently push, not forcing, just gentle, helping the twist along a little bit. And then come back to center. Six fingers, three from each hand underneath the jawbone or right on the jawbone. And drop your shoulders and gently push up. We're not forcing the chin up, which is adding in a little bit of pressure. Nice stretch on the front of the neck, the throat and the upper part of the chest. Take some breaths here. And then release that right hand to left ear. Drop your head to the right. You can rest your left hand on your left knee or thigh. Palm up or down, your choice. See if you feel anything on the left side of the neck. Release the right hand and then bring the head up to center will change left hand right ear drop your head to the left sitting up tall right shoulder is low sitting up tall belly button pulled in just to touch when you pull in your belly button you activate some of the abdominal muscles which is a toning for them which means a um not a massage in this case, but it's uh, a passive way to uh, activate the muscles, to strengthen the muscles in a passive way by, by uh, activating, by pulling in the belly button. I hope that I didn't say that very well, but when we pull in the belly button, the abdominal muscles contract, you can release your left hand. Even though we're not doing crunches, it still tightens up those muscles over time and gives them more strength, okay? Um, Turn your head to the right. We're gonna look up and down or down and up. Smooth breath. And then look down toward the floor on the right side and hold here. Keep moving the breath. Come back to center, head to the left. Looking up and down or down and up. A few times on the left side. Next time your head goes down, look at the floor on your left hand side. You see if you feel a nice stretch on the right side of the neck maybe the top of the right shoulder a little bit, right side of the, up high on the chest. And then come back to center, bring your um, interlaced hands behind your head and just sit up really tall. So the arms are activated, which means that the elbows are up. I don't mean up high, but just we're not allowing the arms to droop. We're putting energy in the arms here. Just hold here. You want to arch your back a little bit, you can do that. That stretches out the muscles on the front side of the torso. Arching the back, using your hands as a little hammock for your head. Elbows wide. And then exhale, bring the elbows near each other and then curl down, elbows toward the knees. If you have access to touch the knees, great. Hovering is good. Inhale, come up, elbows go wide again. Lift your chest, arch your back. Exhale, elbows near each other and then curl down, elbows near the knees or touching. Inhale, come up, elbows wide, arch your back. Exhale, curl. Inhale, lift. Exhale, curl. 
Inhale, lift. We'll do three more rounds. Exhale, curl. Inhale, lift. This is number two. Exhale. Inhale. And this last one, exhale, curl down and hold here. So just let the weight of the arm stretch the back of the neck. Curl down, elbows near the knees or touching your choice. Take some breaths here. And inhale, come up, arch the back. We're gonna hold here now. Elbows wide, chin lifts, arch your back. Chest lifts, hold and breathe. Pull in the belly button. And then come back to neutral. And then let's swan dive the arms down. Let them hang beside you. See how things feel? Notice how your arms feel. Notice how the very top third of you feels. Front and back. So we will come down on the mat now. <clears throat> notice how you feel or notice if you feel any different than when we first began from that little um, seated warm up. Mm -hmm. We'll start with um, Sitting on the mat, we'll start with wide legs. So opening the legs as wide as you can, but not getting into that pain zone that I talked about before. So I want, to see, want you to feel a little sensation. So you have to just ease your weight, your legs open. A little sensation, um, because that lets you know that you're getting a stretch on these, these inner hamstring muscles also don't get a lot of activity unless we are dancers or gymnasts, so, sort of like the side body. So this sitting, and just sitting like this, I do this sometime when I'm watching television. I get down on my, the floor in my bedroom and just sit like this for a few minutes, and that allows a passive stretch to happen on these muscles on the inside of the thigh. So today... As a beginner, you might be this wide and that is comfortable and if you go a little bit more, that's too much for you. I mentioned before, we don't want any pain in yoga, but we will experience discomfort because we are stretching out of our normal, okay? So even if you sat, if you're sitting like this, that is fine. Everybody is working with the body that they have today. So I can bring mine out a little bit more. And if I was, um, practicing yoga like I used to before the pandemic, you know, several times a week, there might be a chance I could get mine even wider, but there's no um, medal for me or no trophy for me just because I can separate my legs really wide. But we're going to the very front edge of the sensation. So that's where I would like for you to be. Toes are flipped up, okay? Just sitting here, hands on your knees or thighs, wherever you want to place them. Shoulders drop down. Again, I talked about we walk around a lot with shoulders raised up, like we're ready for something, even though we're unaware that we're walking around like this. Practice keeping the shoulders low, relaxing the muscles on the tops of the shoulders by just letting them be, letting your skeleton be. So toes are flexed up. The reason why is because our legs are now, um, the muscles in the legs are activated or contracted right now. And again, passive toning, passive working out of those muscles. This is not, the muscle is not our focus right now. I'm working on the stretch here, but this is a bonus of flexing your feet. It activates all the muscles in the leg. Okay, we're gonna exhale and go forward. So going forward as far as you can, that remains in a sort of comfortable range. Um, again, no forcing. I want you to go down more than you can. The more you go down, the more intense it becomes on those inner hamstring muscles. So go down as far as you can. You want a little bit of a challenge, but again, not in the pain zone. 
Flatten your hands and spread your fingers wide. Press into your mat and look down toward the floor. Just hold here. So this is a wide leg seated forward bend. Wide leg seated forward bend. And the target areas, as I mentioned, is the inside of the muscles on the inside of the thigh. And also now with the forward leaning, that low back. So if you suffer from low back tension or pain, do these forward bends. This one is the seated one. I told you they were seated, standing, and on our back. This is another version of seated, wide leg seated. So you can stay here for as long as you can. And that allows those muscles in the low back. First, they'll fight and struggle and wonder what you're doing. And then they release into the stretch. And that's what we're waiting for. So looking down at the floor so that your neck is smooth and long in the back. Hold here and continue your deep breath through your nose. You may over... The next couple of breaths, be able to go out a little more. You can experiment with that or stay right where, you're, where you are now. Take three more breaths here. When you're ready, walk your hands over to the left and turn your torso to the left. So one hand on each side of the left calf or ankle. You might be able to wrap your hands around your left foot. Try that. Hands on the floor around the calf or ankle. Just do what you can do and turn the body because that turns us into a wide leg seated twist. So we talked about the twist. We're getting stretch on the, um, on the, in this case, the right side rib cage, pushing the organs out of their natural position gives them a massage. And with, uh, organs don't get a lot of love because of their inside of us. But um, when they're not working, it's nice to do these twists. What I mean, like the stomach is not digesting. The lungs are always working. The heart is always working. But the other organs, the kidneys are at rest. And so this gives them a massage and it's a, a very uh, therapeutic for their organs to do these yoga twists. So see if you feel a little more intensity on the inside of the right thigh because we're turned away from it. See what you feel. Take two more breaths here. And then we're gonna move our way to the right leg. So hand walk over to the other side. Notice how the muscles feel on this right rib cage as we come back to center and then moving toward the right. You might have felt a little quick rebound of those muscles going back into their regular position. See if you notice now more in, um, intensity on the inside of the left thigh because we turn the torso away from the left side. And turning the torso to the right and then leaning over near the right thigh, and again, hands around. You can even put your hands by your knees. I didn't mention this before. Knees, calves, ankles. If you have access to wrap your hand around your right, hands around your right foot, try that. Pick the position and get still and hold there. Take some breath, looking down at the right knee so the neck is relaxed and back. Twist and breathe. Feet are still flexed. Even though I've forgotten about my feet, I'm kind of in the habit of flexing my feet when I teach now because it's been so many years. But my feet are still flexed, so I'm still getting that passive toning of the muscles in both legs. Twisting to the right and breathing, looking down toward the right knee. Smooth out your breath. Control it. It is long, slow, deep inhales. Then you let it all out in one continuous exhale. So you're controlling your breathing. And then let's hand walk to the middle again and hold there. Notice the rebound of the muscles. So maybe now you can bend your elbows, maybe. Give that a try, otherwise stay up. On the hands, if you need a little break, you can come upright a little bit more. Feet are still flexed, looking down toward the floor. So I feel like because we've been here for a while, I can go down a little bit more. 
So I'm pushing my hands away. You can stay where you are. You can experiment with hands out a little bit more. Flat palms, spread fingers. Look down toward the mat. And then inhale and walk, hand walk upright. And then let's bring the legs together, feet on the floor. First, let's, I'm sorry, legs together, windshield wiper the legs, shake your hands. And then we're gonna put feet flat on the mat. Separate your feet comfortably. And we'll just windshield wiper from side to side. And so depending on how far to the side you go, you get a little massage on the on the hip, the fleshy part of the hip. Um, if you don't go that far to the side, it's more of a massage on the buttocks. It's also um, hip joints are getting a little bit of movement. Even the low part of the spine is getting a little motion as well. So just massaging, especially when you go really down, like up to my right side, I can feel my hip joint touching the floor. So see if you notice that. You can position your feet. If you want them closer to you, you do that. So again, your body, your choice. You are your own, you are your best yoga teacher. If you want to bring the feet out away a little bit more, you can do that as well. So you find, you can move it around. It doesn't have to be in one spot, but you can find the We'll call it the sweet spot, the best, uh, ther most therapeutic feeling, um, depending on the placement of your feet. So we'll come back up to seated, separate, um, soles touch, separate the knees. And I say this every week. Let me grab a block real quick <clears throat> to have these close. So not everyone has yoga blocks. I have them because I teach. But you can also use books. You can also roll up towels. So in order for this shape, this is called butterfly or cobbler. Not peach cobbler, but shoemaker cobbler. So when I have these blocks under my legs, I can let go of my legs. And the blocks support this shape. You can put books. You can roll up two towels, which are more comfortable than blocks because they're fabric instead of rubber or whatever these are made out of. And so instead of, and I can hold my legs like this too. It's not a big deal, but when, when you're new to yoga, you want to use all the support that you can get so that you're, when you're, while your body's getting used to the new things you're doing with it. So we sit here, sit up really tall. This is again, butterfly pose. Um, you can have your feet touching, which takes a little more effort, or you can allow the sides of the feet, the blade edge of the feet to touch and the feet themselves open like a book. Your choice. But it is more effort to keep them together. And it doesn't matter which way you place them. Your choice. And again, this is a stretch. This is a hip opener and a stretch for the inside of the, the muscles on the inside of the thighs. The ones I keep saying don't get a lot of stretch or activity unless we're in gymnastics or dancing. So hold here, you can hang on to your ankles if you want or palms on the mat and lifting the chest, just hold here. You can look down at your feet so that the neck is relaxed and hold here. Take some breaths through your nose and again, controlling our breathing. Controlling in and out like ocean waves, smooth breath. Full, complete, and deep inhales, long, slow. And then letting all air out. If you don't let out all the air, you um, diminish the capacity of the next breath, how much you can inhale. And so each time we actually want to push out because that old breath doesn't have much, much oxygen left in it. So try to really push out the previous, in the, in the previous exhale. So when you're ready, just walk your hands away from you and lean forward. Look down at your feet. So again, your neck is relaxed. Some of you may have access to forearms down. Otherwise, palms flat on the mat and pushing into the, into the floor. 
When we push, we're activating the muscles in the arm. So again, passive toning of the muscles in the arm. And then inhale, come up and stretch the legs out. Again, windshield wiper the legs. We can also windshield wiper the knees. I should say windshield wiper the feet. And now we'll windshield wiper our knees. And you can adjust your feet feet to your comfort where you want the distance away from your torso. And just side to side. You can do these on your back too. These are really good on the back. I'll show you real quick. Because you can really get even more to the side if you're laying on your back. It adds a little tiny spinal twist um, when you do it, when you're laying on your back. So now we extend the left leg out, toes up. We talked about why the toes are up. It turns on the muscles in whatever body part, even when you're flexing your wrist, same thing happens in the arm. Bring the um, right ankle above or below the left knee. So not on the knee joint. Knees are not supposed to have anything placed on them because they're really delicate. They have a lot of work, that, a lot of structure, muscles and bones and cartilage. And so we don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on our knees ever. So pick the position for your right ankle or the placement for your right ankle. Right hand on the inside of the right knee, push gently down toward the floor. So this is a hip opener. Uh, I don't remember the proper name, but it basically looks like an upside down number four is how you can reference this. Left toes pointing up, shoulders are down. I'm just pressing down gently. And then exhale, walk forward. So this shape, hip opener with this leg crossed. Forward bend, nice for the low back. Extended left leg is getting, the back of the leg is getting, the muscles are getting a stretch. So the calf muscle, backs of the knees, and the hamstring muscles are all getting a stretch when we lean forward here. Looking down toward the left knee, palms are flat and placed on the outside of the left leg, wherever it's comfortable. Some of you may be able to wrap around the left foot. Find a placement for your hand that's comfortable, for your hands that's comfortable and hold. Inhale, lift, we'll do three of these. Exhale, forward. Take your time, breathe in. Sit up really tall when we come up. Exhale, forward. That was number two. And then here's number one. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down and hold. So hands wherever, lean forward, look down. And then inhale, walk yourself up. Check out how the right leg feels when you extend it out. It might feel a little different than the left. It's windshield wiper the feet change sides. Left ankle above or below the right knee. Right toes up. And just walk yourself. I skipped a part. Left hand to left palm. Press down gently. So we're not forcing. We're not jamming. We're just letting the pressure of the arm, left arm, push that uh, knee or that leg down a little bit. It deep, opens the hip joint a little more with this pressure. But we're not trying to jam anything. Right toes are up, sitting tall, shoulders relaxed. Now we can exhale and go forward. Hands on either side of the right leg or wrap, look down toward the right knee. Let's inhale for three, come up, sit up really straight each time we come up. Exhale forward. So slow and easy control. Inhale, lift. This is two. Exhale down. And one more. Inhale, lift. And I'm going to hold again. Exhale down. Keep the breath flowing. And then walk yourself up on the inhale. Release the left leg. Compare left to right. And then put your wipe with the feet.
We'll go back to wide legs. Bring the left sole of the foot to touch the inside of the right thigh. We're gonna just walk the hand. We have some options. We're gonna lean, this is what it's gonna look like. You can bring the right forearm on top of the right shin or outside the right leg or inside the right leg. So there's a placement there that feels the best for your body. And then we're gonna lift the left arm straight up. So straight from the shoulder. And we're also reaching the fingertips up. So we want to, even though our spine is going off to an angle to the right, we want the spine long. So if I sat up, my spine is as long as I could get it. So the same thing, leaning over to the right. So place your arm. It's a little deeper bend when it's on the outside of the right leg, because um, the floor is that many more inches below the, left, the right shin. Um, if that's too much, bring it on the inside of the right leg. Left arm up. So traditionally, we would look up at the left hand. For some of us, that is too much on the neck. So I want you to, pop, to um, consider looking straight out horizontally or look down toward the right knee. One of those positions of your head is the most comfortable. Find that and hold the shape. And so we're reaching up with the left fingers. Take some breaths. And then inhale both arms up. Notice how the left side, the rebound feels. And then swan dive the arms down. Extend the left leg out to the left. Left toes stay pointed up. We'll bring the right foot in to the right, to the left thigh. Again, left forearm outside the left leg on top of the left shin in front of the left leg, your choice. And then bring the right arm up. You may look up at the right hand. This side for me to look up to the right is much easier. The left side felt not so great. So sides are different. Reaching up looking up or looking horizontally outward or down toward the left knee, your pick. Hold here and breathe deeply. Take two more breaths here. And then inhale, both arms up, swan dive the arms down. Extend the legs out again, windshield wiper. So we'll go into final rest. And um, you can do it seated if you'd like, or if you want to come, a um, couple of options for the traditional Shavasana or corpse pose. So this is what it looks like traditionally. For a lot of us, this is just too much, too vulnerable, whatever. Some of us have low back pain. So you can separate your feet flat, knees touching. That takes uh, pressure off the lumbar spine. Uh, if laying out flat is too much for you, you can bend the knees and turn to either side, your favorite side, and use the bottom arm as a pillow. And that is side Shavasana. So come to your version of Shavasana. And Shavasana means two things in Sanskrit, which is the language of yoga. One thing it means is um, corpse pose. So this is corpse pose. It also means um, final rest in yoga, final rest. So this is the time that we allow the body to rest from all of our movements allowing the body to um, you know, the energy that we've stirred up to basically go through the body in an even and equal way. And so whatever shape you're in, just notice the contact you are making with whatever you're laying on or sitting on. Check out your breath. Smooth and easy breathing. Check out your jaw, facial muscles, that they're relaxed and neutral. 
we are just allowing the face to be. Noticing any sensations around your body that weren't there before we started. You may feel some differences. Noticing your breathing. Does it feel a little more relaxed and stable? Not so shallow and choppy. Noticing your breath. Noticing your emotions. On your next inhale, bring your arms up over your head, stretch out real big. And then when you're ready, come up to seated. So I wanted to thank you for having me. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. And again, my name is Dijor. Thank you, Uma Clinic, for having me. Take care. <laughs>